this. Mm -hmm. From childhood, he answered. If it has often it has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us mm -hmm. and help us. Mm -hmm. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Well. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene. He rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. Mm -hmm. I command you, come out of him mm -hmm. and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked convulsed him violently mm -hmm. and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. Mm -hmm. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? Mm -hmm. He replied, this kind can come out only by prayers. Mm -hmm. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we travel on this journey we call life, there are many things and people to whom we have become faithful. As a child, we are faithful to our parents and grandparents. As adults, we are faithful to our spouses or our children, or at least we ought to be. We are faithful to our church and our daily devotional. We are faithful to our social circles, our fraternities, sororities, mm -hmm. masons, and mm -hmm. eastern stars, and so forth. Mm -hmm. We have faith in our hairdressers, barbers, mechanics, Okay. Dry cleaners, tailors, and handymen. Mm -hmm. We have faith in the name brands we buy, the stores we shop at, in the shoes we wear, the dresses and the suits, and the pocketbooks we purchase. Mm -hmm. Some people even have faith in the make of the cars they buy. Well, we have faith in so many things and so many people. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they have been proven to be trustworthy and reliable time after time. The Bible has given us many situations, scenarios, and stories of a trustworthy God. Come on. However, when we are faced with troubles, trials, and tribulations, our faith in God is mysteriously absent. Mm -hmm. Somehow we lose faith in our all-knowing all-powerful and all-wise God? Mm -hmm. Or is it that we've never really had that much faith mm -hmm. in God? Mm -hmm. This past election has truly put a strain on some people's faith. Mm -hmm. People are fearful of living under a Trump administration. Yeah. And my question to them is why are you worried about a man who don't even know how to comb his hair? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I know somebody who trumps Trump. Yeah. He is king of kings and lord of lords, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So I came today to ask all of you a very pertinent and important question. Well, Lord. And I want you to be honest with yourselves, and that question is, and I will use it for my subject this morning, where is your faith in God? Yeah. The Bible tells us that God can. God is able and God does heal, deliver, and set free. Yeah, yeah. And because of the impeccable track record of God, uh, we should proclaim that there is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same for you. I've come to encourage somebody today and let you know that God is still 
in the prayer hearing and the prayer answering business. And for this reason, your faith in God should not be weakened and it should not be lost. Mm -hmm. I can see if you've lost faith in an unjust justice system. Mm -hmm. I can see if you lost faith in our law enforcement due to the census killings of our young black men and women. Lord, have mercy. I can see if you lost faith in this mean old cruel world due yeah. to wars and yeah. terrorist attacks and the yeah. brutal murders of Christians by ISIS. Yeah. I can see if you lost faith in our government due to lawmakers and a health care reform bill that leaves people's lives hanging in the balance. Uh, I can even see if you lost faith in mankind when you have men saying they are women trapped in a man's body or a woman saying that they're trapped in a man's body and then they turn around and come to church talking about God is too wise to make a mistake and too just to do wrong. If that's the case, God made you the exact sex he wanted you to be. Yes. Well, well, yes. well, well. I'm, I'm, I'm just simply making an observation here. Mm -hmm. People have even lost faith in the church mm -hmm. because they've been mistreated and hurt by church folk. Mm -hmm. I can see if you lost faith in all of these things, but losing faith in God, I cannot see. You should lose faith in the one who woke you up this morning, the one who provides your every need, the one who is always there when others walk out on you. You should lose faith on the one who gave his only son to die so that you might live. And if you've lost your faith, in the words of Dick Gregory, what kind of fool is you? <laughs> in 1985, the late Reverend James Cleveland released a song entitled, Where is Your Faith in God? In this song, two Christians were talking and one of them had backslidden. The backslider was complaining about he was sick. Mm -hmm. He was in trouble. Mm -hmm. He was out of work. He was, yeah. and, and due to his situation, he had picked up a bad habit and he complained about being out of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finally, the other Christian asked him, where is your faith in God? Yeah. 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 Maybe someone here under the sound of my voice may have or are facing some of the same dilemmas this backslider was facing. But I have good news for you this morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said I have good news yeah. for you yeah. this morning. Yeah. Don't lose heart because help is on the way. Yeah. The hymn just put it like this. Oh, yeah. Be not dismayed, whatever be tired. Yeah. God will. Yeah. Yeah. God will I'm take care I'm of you. Yeah. My prayer today is that somebody's faith will be strengthened through this message. Yes, now let's define faith. Faith is defined in the dictionary uh -huh. as complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Well, but the biblical definition of faith right, is found in Hebrews 11 and 1, uh, yes, where it says, Now faith is the substance uh, of things hoped for, evidence. the evidence of things not seen. Uh, Two Corinthians, I mean Second Corinthians. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't have spoken Donald Trump. Second Corinthians five and seven says, "We walk by faith and not by sight." Well, well. So how do we get this faith? Amen. Romans ten seventeen says, "Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God." All we have is the word of God in which to build our faith. Yeah. Because we have a faith in a God we cannot see, in a virgin birth we cannot see, mm -hmm. in a crucifixion we cannot see, mm -hmm. in a resurrection we cannot see, uh -huh. but we have infallible truth. Well. Faith is the dominating feature of a Christian's life. Well. We live by faith. Yes, sir. We are saved 
by faith. Yes. And we are sanctified by faith. By faith. Yes. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, for by grace are we saved yes. through faith. Yes. And that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. Yes. And even though our faith at times may be imperfect, uh, our faith at times may be doubting, our faith at times may be wavering, and our faith at times may be weak, but thanks be to God, our yeah. faith is still yeah. sufficient. Faith, 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 little faith. Uh, as we tiptoe towards the text, uh, Jesus, Peter, James, and John are coming down from the mountain of transfiguration. Mm. It is here on this mountain, Peter, James, and John witnessed Jesus transfigured right before their eyes. And they see Jesus talking with Elias and Moses. Jesus charges them to tell no one what they just saw. And when they get down to the bottom of the mountain, Jesus sees his disciples with a great multitude of people around them and he hears the scribes questioning them. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine this was a very chaotic scene. Mm -hmm. Jesus had just come down from a glorious occasion yeah. Yeah. to a grievous situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. From his father to the faithless. Yeah. From triumph to trials. Mm -hmm. Come on. From the mountain of transfiguration mm -hmm. to the valley of of tribulation. Mm -hmm. I need to let somebody know that whenever you come down from your mountain into the valley, always expect trouble and challenges. Mm -hmm. In our text today, we see at least two challenges. Well, first, we see that our faith will be questioned. Uh -huh. In verse 14, we see the people and the scribes questioning the disciples, so Jesus uh, posing the question like Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not one of his disciples, not, not one scribe opens his mouth. The scribe said nothing because debating with Jesus was a losing battle. And the disciples said nothing because they were embarrassed. Well, However, one person from the crowd speaks out. It is uh -huh, a con uh -huh, concerned uh -huh. father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He explains to Jesus how his son has an evil spirit inside him and how, his, how this evil spirit ravages his son's body. Mm -hmm. He tells Jesus how he brought his son to his disciples to cast out the demon, but they could not. Mm -hmm. Here are the disciples of the great miracle work of Jesus. Yeah, come on. They have walked and worked alongside him for over two years, and now they were at a loss. Mm. I need to remind you that back in, need I remind you that back in Mark chapter 6, Jesus sends out these same disciples two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. Yes, that's right. The Bible says, and they cast out many devils and anointed with all many that were sick and healed them. So everybody knew what took place, and that's why the father brought his son to them, and that's why the scribes were questioning them. They, act, they said, you've done it before. Why can't you do it again? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So what happened between chapter 6 uh -huh. and chapter 9? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what happened. Doubt and unbelief happened. Yeah. Well, in other words, a lack of faith. Well, you see, in chapter 6, Jesus was right there with them. But in chapter 9, Jesus was absent. But little did they know that they were going to have to get used to being without Jesus yeah. because his earthly ministry was coming to an end yeah, right. very soon. Mm -hmm. When Jesus heard that his disciples could not cast out the demons, he said to them, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? This was a hard 
situation for Jesus. To see the lack of faith his disciples had. And it is equally as hard for Jesus to see the lack of faith we as so-called Christians have in him today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We come to church and we sing and talk about God being our Jehovah Jireh, yeah. the Lord who provides. Yeah. But when we are lacking or when we are in need, we get depressed and have nervous breakdowns and suicidal thoughts. Yeah. We sing and talk about God being Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, yet when we get a bad report from the doctor, death is the first thing that comes to our mind. <coughs> All the encouragement we have given to others, but we have not learned to encourage ourselves. Yeah. The late Walter Hawkins said in a song, everywhere you go there is trouble. Yeah. Everywhere you go, there is strife. Everywhere you go, there is something that worries you. But I come to remind you and to tell you that remember, God is always standing by. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So my question to all of you once again is, where is your faith in God? Amen. First challenge of faith is that our faith will be questioned. And the second challenge of our faith is that our faith will be tested. Yes. Yeah. Look at verse 19 of the text. Jesus said, bring the boy to me. Mm -hmm. And as they are bringing the boy to Jesus, Jesus comes eye to eye with this unclean spirit. And it convulses the boy, throws him to the ground, and mm -hmm. he begins to wallow and foam at the mouth. Mm -hmm. In verse 21 of the text, Jesus asked a question for which he already knew the answer. Mm. He asked the father, how long mm. 